Hello and welcome to the W.B. Mason Coaches Report on GoHofstra.com. Joined as always by the head coach of the Hofstra baseball team, John Russo. Coach, welcome. Hey, thanks for having me. You got it. A, a four and two start to the season, coming off a three and one weekend at LaSalle. Let's get right into it. First, we got to start off with the pitching. Jack Jett, uh, CA Pitcher of the Week, after his Eight inning, no runs, one infield hit, nine strikeout performance. Then you got also got great performances from uh, Mark Fiello in relief coming out of the bullpen in game two, gave you five scoreless innings, picks up his first win in in over a year. Um, Ryan Rue gave you a good start on uh, Sunday in the in the finale of the game of the series. Plus, you got good relief outings from uh, Mikolajczyk and. And even and Mott and Alja Sujak came on, gave you an inning. So let's talk about the pitching. You know, 2.66 ERA to start the year. Uh, you know, really good for any team. But you know, coming from for Hofstra in the in the early parts of the season, when the when the pitching is usually a little bit behind the other teams that we're playing, it's it's a you know outstanding number six games into the season. You no, know, I think it all starts with you know Jet. You know Jack. Um... You know, to his level of performance has been incredible. Take it a step further, you know, for our whole team. You know, you get up at uh, 4.30 in the morning, you get on a bus at 5.45, you drive three hours, you get uh, uh, off the bus, you ride into BP, and then an hour later, Jack's, you know, on the mound. And so I don't know how many, I mean, he has a zero ERA, and so does a couple other people. I don't know how many have had to do his, you know, uh, route to get to a zero and not been at home and, and been on the road. Um, I thought he was inches away from a no hitter. Uh, he had an infield hit in the sixth, lost out on a bang bang call at first base. Other than that, there wasn't really a hit that threatened anything. He wanted the ninth. Um, we were up seven nothing. We're able to get another inning from uh, Aljo that game to to get uh, you know another inning. But he's been the epitome of what a leader looks like. Uh, I love his looseness. I love that uh, the energy he's bringing and setting a tone to game one. And I think his confidence and everything is just rubbing off on all the other pitchers. Uh, really proud of Fiello and his uh, relief performance. Uh, you know, one of his best performances in an off uniform. Uh, just really proud of his growth and really trusting his stuff. And, you know, I, I thought he was really settled in, but more importantly, got a, out of a big bases loaded jam and his last inning of work that we, you know, let him face the guy and, and get his, uh, get his own out. You know, Jimmy Joyce had a great start too. And, you know, he, he was trying to outdo Jet, even though Jet uh, threw a one hitter, Jimmy was trying to go all nine. And, you know, until that hiccup in the seventh, uh, you know, I thought he pitched great. I thought Jimmy was really, really good. He made one bad pitch to one really good hitter. I don't feel bad about it because Jimmy's our best competitor on the team. And, more importantly, um, it's a matchup that we just we liked, and and Jimmy lost, and we're okay at night. Uh, sleep with it, and I'll give it to Jimmy another time. And then, you know, Ryan Rue is dependable. He gave us five innings at the end, and then we were able to to shut it down with some relief. And so, we're starting to develop some roles with guys. John Mikolasic at the end is, you know, really making us confident. Chris Mott has really come in and done a great job and made us confident. Uh, I think Alho is going to be great in that role. Really impressed Stephen Bosch, you know, came back and had uh, four strikeouts in two innings and looked really good in his relief role. Um, just super happy with the staff. Uh, really, you know, big credit to Blake Nation, our pitching coach, having those guys ready early in the season. Now the offense, you know, can't leave the offense out. Uh, put up some some good numbers on, on Sunday and, you know, batting hour just slowly climbing up as the, you know, the weather hasn't been that, that great too for the hitters. But, you know, let's talk about Austin Gauthier, you know, 471 batting average, leads the nation in walks, is on base percentages, it's over 71, slugging is one over 1,000. The carryover from last year, you know, it seems like he hasn't missed a beat and maybe even is a little bit better. You know, I think we probably talked the whole segment about Austin. The thing I take away from Austin is, you know, work ethic, you know, putting in the extra work, having a plan, having a process. I mean, he does all of those things exceptionally. And then, oh, by the way, he's a pretty good hitter. Um, you know, he's staying to what he wants to do. I, I thought all four of his extra base hits on Monday were, you know, right either center field or right of center field. You know, his home run was oppo. Uh, 
then you're thinking, well, hey, we could probably pitch him in. On Friday, they tried to pitch him in and he hit a homer to left center and a uh, single to left. So, and then more importantly, he's taking his walks and he's not, um, he's not expanding his strike zone. He's not, uh, you know, not confident with two strikes in the count. Uh, he has a real grip of what he's doing at the plate. I was hopeful, you know, a couple other guys would see from him and taking walks. And when a couple of these other guys are struggling a little bit, they're afraid to keep taking their walks. And we have a bunch of walks. I mean, we're over 400 on base percentage right now. And um, guys just get a little anxious. And I think everybody's going to be all right. I'm really happy with the direction the offense is headed. Um, we're not putting up the big hits just yet, but we're also drawing you know, about eight to 10 walks a game. So I, I would take that all day. Another guy, you know, that would be remiss if we didn't mention the performance of Luke Napolitano in, uh, on Sunday with his five hits, seven, R, uh, four hits, seven RBIs. Um, what did you see from Luke? You know, obviously making his, his second start of the, of the season, you know, redshirt freshman transfer from, from Kansas. What did he show you in that game against LaSalle? You know, Luke's a great kid, first and foremost. He really added good weight over the Christmas break, put himself in a really strong position to have a chance to contribute this year. You know, you got to remember he's trying to um, – we didn't have many openings on this roster with, uh, you know, what we had returning. We got a top 25 offense in the country. And uh, I thought Luke just stepped in there. He had a rough first game on Friday. But then on Monday, you know, he got down in the count, 0-2, bases loaded, and you know, I saw him miss a pitch and he smiled a little bit after he missed the pitch. So I thought, well, he might be on this guy. And then he got the ball really well to right center field and was able to split the gap for a base clear and triple. And I felt like that just let out a lot of energy on him. You know, people that the transfer from Connecticut or whatever, or Kansas. And, uh, you know, that, that held pressure somewhat. I feel like he kind of got rid of it in that moment. And then after that, he had, you uh, know, you know, three more hits easily could have had a fourth hit. His one out was a one hop missile at the second baseman for a double play. And, you know, seven ribbies, he was two away from our single game record. So not terrible from your nine hole in the game. And, um, but just shows how deep our offense is. I think Luke will be somebody that can contribute in that type of offense. Uh, just really happy for him as a person. I know what he's gone through the last few years and to get that opportunity and do that well, he was very deserving of the success he got. Another guy I just want to mention quickly, Brian Goulard. Doesn't, hasn't wowed you with, you know, big numbers yet this season, but still 300 average. And he always seems to come, come through with uh, a way to drive in a run, leads the team with eight RBIs, including three sacrifice flies. What is his approach at the plate that, that leads to his success with, with runners on base? I think he, you know, he's a fifth year guy. Now he's a sixth year guy because he was fifth year after uh, transferring from Fordham. Um, you know, just brings a real presence to the plate. I think he's kind of seen it all now. Uh, I think the other thing is he fits in really well with us. We all have a lot of confidence in him. He enjoys being a part of the club and on the team. You know, I, I love Brian as a kid, uh, you know, just very straight up, uh, you know, simple conversations, not overdoing any much. And that's what you got to be able to do in RBI situations is just uh, relax and be able to embrace it and I think that he's starting to do that at the plate I think he started to do it a little bit last year and then something over the fall I thought the fall he was one of our best hitters if not our best hitter and I'm really happy it's come um, into the season this way but another kid that works really hard really quiet super humble um, and more you know just wants the team to win and be successful and you know fits right into the culture we're trying to do here and he's a big part of the culture. All right, so you're going to take this 4-2 and two record to back to Philadelphia area this weekend uh, against Villanova. A little change to the series with Friday's game being canceled due to the predicted weather. So just a doubleheader on Sunday. What do you look for against the Wildcats? You know, they're going to be really tough. Their first two guys are really good. And, you know, I think in any type, you're only playing a two-game series. Everybody's got enough pitching to shut down the other guy. So it's going to be a you know, similar to, to a Seton Hall games where you're 3-2, three, 2-3, two, two, three, you know, big knock, you know, here or there to, to score runs. you got to play defense. All stuff I think we can do really well. You know, um, they've got a really big yard there, so there's not going to be many extra base hits, I don't believe. And, um, you know, we're going to have to play baseball a little bit clean and, and win. I, I like that, you know, we're starting to get some small ball, you know, to our game a little bit. So I think that might help us in these, you know, two uh, – 
you know, doubleheader, just two games on the weekend type deals. And I know this, they're a big East team. They're a good club and really love the matchup because it'll help us get ready for CAA play. All right. That's this Sunday at Villanova with the first pitch in game one at 11 a.m. Coach, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Len. And you've been watching the WB Mason Coaching Report on GoHofstra.com.